Welcome to this oral history interview, part of the developing series of interviews focusing on African American experiences on Route 66 centered around Greene County, Missouri. My name is Samuel Knotts, Managing Editor of the Unite News Publication. This series is supported in part by a grant from the Route 66 Corridor Preservation Program of the National Park Service. Today's date is Wednesday, December 9th, 2015. Our special guest today is Abraham Clark. Uh, he is a retired Marine uh, Corps veteran. Uh, also, he is retired from the Springfield Police Department and uh, has done a number of things in the community. Uh, he considers himself a jack of all trades, but uh, welcome again for our second uh, interview with uh, Abraham Clark. Welcome and thank you for visiting with us today. We OC talked. OCO. Thank you. We uh, talked earlier about uh, some of your experiences uh, um, in the Springfield community. Uh, you you uh, served in a number of positions uh, with the police department, uh, with our sheriff department, uh, volunteer firefighter, uh, just a number of uh, important roles in the community. Uh, Kind of share with us maybe some uh, additional uh, experiences that you've had living here in Springfield, Green County. Oh, so, uh, that's Cherokee for thank you. Tohishu, how are you? I, I speak about three other languages besides English. Uh, I speak a little Swahili, the Spanish. They always come on South Stead, Jumbo Jumbo, Abuayagani, that's Swahili. I'm going to start with the Spanish, how are you doing? Muy bien, gracias, or whatever, and, and so on. And my Indian name is, um, <clears throat> the way you say my name in Cherokee, Abraham is Aquahami, in case you didn't know that. And um, the given name uh, is uh, Eagle Warrior, because I am a warrior of the past, and of course, perhaps of the present. Uh, Route 66, was a fun time, and uh, I also remember the days that I got my kicks on 66. How's that? I got my kicks on Route 66. And I also recall the uh, theaters on uh, West 66, uh, the Sunset Drive-In, uh, the Springfield Drive-In on the east side of town, uh, the um, Fox, the Gilroys, the Landers. Now, the Landers Theater, I, I recall that the the blacks Th this thing may have been kind of going by the time i moved here i'm really a native of arkansas my people moved here around about the time this integration thing was going on so uh at the time we were still uh, permitted to sit upstairs in the landers theater the blacks all sit upstairs uh it was always a fun time to go there i, I personally never recognized any uh racial problem other than being upstairs, but uh, that was a fun time because of the, what they call a free show day on weekends. And we all would go to what we call the free show. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, some of the other experiences I've had here is uh, going to Joplin, um, transitioning back and forth to Joplin, St. Louis, Missouri, um, along with uh, the 66, along with the theaters, uh, then the uh, <clears throat> The downloads there on downtown, if you recall that place, was a eating place, and they they were somewhat prejudiced there as well. They had problems with some of the blacks, and incidentally, my brother was one of the victims there that uh, the police was called on him for no reason because they didn't want to serve him, and he was beaten up by the police and handcuffed there. Uh, downloads in that in that particular time. Um, the other experience that we've had here in uh, Springfield is uh, we also had a um, Walter Majors Classic Car Club that uh, I was the president of that and it was a mixed club it wasn't black only um, I don't really believe in that segregation thing but we, we did have white brothers in, in the car club I remember the days that I uh, talk about 66 I had old cars back in the day that I drove up and down 66, the 1954 Chevy. I also on during those times, about during those days, uh, 
like a 1957 Chevy pickup with the old big wide tires and 427 big block in it. I mean, it was fun days for us kids, you know, growing up. And today I, I own a 1929 Model A Roaster and I still own a 1954 Chevy, a uh, two-door hardtop Bel Air. Um, the club was uh, incorporated. Um, by the way, there's that same, if you, you feel my mention that for the camera. We were incorporated, right there to your right, right here. Yeah. We were incorporated with the state of Missouri. Uh, I brought some more items this time so we can camera shoot them for record. That is our incorporation papers. Uh, we're no longer an organization now, we're dissolved. Um, now, when was this uh, car club uh, um, in service? It was around 1985, somewhere in there. Okay. And uh, we just dissolved that a few years ago. And just for context of date, you had mentioned earlier uh, a restaurant downtown, and you said your brother had got into some trouble with the uh, police department. About what was the date around that incident? Oh, man. I've lost calculation on the date. I would say it was in the 70s. In yeah. the 70s, it was okay. in the 70s. Early 70s, okay. Yeah, because we had a lot of other incidents that happened around Springfield area by the police. Okay. You know, so. That I, helped. I, would, I would say it was in the 70s. That helped give some context to the time there. Okay. Um, did you have a question yet? That was my question. Okay. And so my growing up here, I also attended uh, Taft Elementary School, uh, Pipkin. We know it as junior high school today. I also attended the Eastwood, which is now OTC. I attended there. And I also attended uh, Central, which I graduated from around 1965. 65. And I also attended, uh, after that, I also attended uh, SMSU for a while. And the service, at that time, service was pretty hot in Vietnam. And so I decided to volunteer into the Marine Corps. However, uh, at that time I had moved out from home as a young man. I lived on my own about 16 years old and worked and go was going, going to school at the same time. And so that was quite an experience to live on your, on your own and never go back home. To this day I never went back home to live with my parents. But anyway, I joined the Marine Corps and I may want to clarify something about some of the time involved in these different activities here. Uh, uh, I've got years in with the railroad, years in with the police department. You combine all these things, you say, well now, how do you get all that time in? It seemed like it's overdoing things a little bit there. But some of these things were done in conjunction with other activities is how the time was uh, allocated. Uh, so anyway, I joined the Marine Corps and I went to boot camp. As I stated in the last deal, I, uh, boot camp was hard at that, in those days. It's a lot harder than today. And it was hard to make rank even. And by surprise, by the grace of God, I made my first rank out of boot camp, which was a PFC. And but all my rank I made throughout the Marine Corps was like meritoriously nice. I, I never, I was always squared away, tried to be, tried to make the best of it, even though when I first went in, I didn't like it because when, you, when I first went into boot camp, it was like, man, when you step off that bus, when you stepped off, those DIs, man, they were, they were terrible. And I thought, man, what have I done with my life? You know, but I stayed in, made the best of it. And then later I was stationed in Kevlar, June, North Carolina. And later I also was stationed in Beaufort, South Carolina. And there is where I received orders for Westpac, they called it, which was Vietnam. And I was transported to Vietnam. And uh, we first landed in Okinawa. And um, that was introduction, I guess, for Vietnam. But I was wondering why I never had, we never had weapons prior to entering Vietnam. But anyway, we, we were sent off to Vietnam. And that was a terrible time. We usually spent 
13 months in, 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 uh, in Vietnam. Um, we, I was there just in time for the real Tet. Some of you have heard about Tet. It was terrible um, combat. I was in charge of, of, of troops. I was, in fact, I was a squad leader out of boot camp. Then I got into Vietnam, I was in charge of a unit as well. And uh, we lost people on contact with the Vietnamese, Vietnam, Vietcong. Um, I served about 10 years in the Marine Corps and came back to the stateside. And my first job, I think, when I came back was like with Paul Mueller's. Well, incidentally, Paul Mueller, I worked there for several months, but incidentally, there was a racial problem there. And um, I was harassed and um, taken in office and threatened to be fired and all kinds of things. But then I decided to leave because of the friction of my color. There was only about one or two blacks working at Paul Mueller's at that time. And so I applied for the railroad and in 1970, I went to the railroad. Well, after being there for several years, 1978, I guess it would be about eight years that I was discriminated against there. Uh, in fact, if some of you remember back in 78, this June the 15th, I won't forget the date, that they had that walk out, the St. Louis, San Francisco Railroad, that was the way it was then before it became Burlington Northern. Um, the supervisor had made comments in a, in a safety meeting that uh, he was going to make, make an example out of someone. And that someone happened to be me at the time. So I was fired there in 78, June of 15th, and I, I didn't realize of the friends that I had working there, the relationship I had with the people. Everybody walked out from the railroad, except for a few old heads. They shut the whole thing down. Yeah, they shut it down. And so after that, I was, uh, got a chance to go to, well, Burlington Northern merged with us in 1980. In 1985, all the shops was closed down over there, and so everybody was furloughed, no jobs. So I had opportunity to go to Lincoln, Nebraska, and I worked out of the Havelock shops up there. And um, I was there for a while before racial problems there. I was I accepted a supervisor's position, and um, they brought in a superintendent from Birmingham, Alabama, and the thing was on again. So he didn't like me or he didn't like blacks or something. I don't know what his problem was. So that was an issue there. But I, I stuck it out there with him. And then I was retired from there, from Lincoln, Nebraska. And in fact, there's the, uh, my supervisor's completion of certificate there. The white one sent me. You want to show that? Now, for the racial problems in Springfield, me growing up, I can recall some of the things, events that happened. Um, I don't know if some of you may remember the old City Hall drugstore. It used to be on Central in Boonville. And uh, there was a black man that was just shot down by the police. Uh, I don't know of any other way that they <clears throat> tried to apprehend him other than shooting him. Uh, also around about that time, this was like in the 70s, uh, there was a man by the name of Solomon Woods that was beaten up real bad to death around North National by the, um, the whites. Um, also, there in the last few years, there was a man, I'm not calling names, but there was a man that was beaten real bad by the police, but he didn't want to report it or do anything about it. And it's been, uh, I would say, seven or eight years ago just guess off the top of my head. Um, so we've had some issues here in Springfield, and as far as the racial problems here that exist, I, I think we still have a, quite a bit of it. I've never personally been exposed to so much of it, but I know it's, it's still alive, well alive. And um, that's kind of where I see that. And as far as the uh, Sheriff's Department, 
Sheriff's Department, the Police Department is Police Department. I work down there. Back in the day, it was on a garden level, and he was the chief of police. And uh, of course, we've had other changes since his time while I was still working there. There were about four of the blacks that worked down there. The one I was trying to think of was Buddy Ruby, if you remember him, that was killed a few years ago. Um, we called him Slick. And then the two Adams brother that worked down there. But incidentally, the first black I recall working there was Charles Burton. I went by the name of Charlie Burton. He was the first black. And this is the Sheriff's Department, the commission I had with Mickey Owens. I went through a racial problem there with Mickey Owens and getting hired there as a, um, on the Sheriff's Department as a deputy. Um, so, uh, what is Sammy? As for some of my activities, as you can see, I've, I've done I've done a apprenticeship with the uh, police department. Not the police department. Excuse me, the railroad. I was talking about the four-year apprenticeship that we go through there at the railroad. I also completed that. And I just brought some of these items in for this exhibit. Um, I was also a member of the, uh, we covered the uh, car club. I was also a member of the uh, SAA, which was Springfield Apartment and Housing Association. I went down there, Sammy, the black one. Um, that was, what that involved was the uh, investors of Springfield. And we had property and they formed an organization and which I became a part of as the only black uh, renting property, buying property. And I did have a problem with uh, sometimes purchasing property compared to the white people because they said if you had so many properties then you couldn't buy anymore. But there were some that had more property. I never thought about having them. They were still being able to buy. But I was not able to buy, purchase. So I also was a uh, member of the NAACP for years. several years in there and because um, we pretty well know what that was about we uh, defended people in the civil rights and it wasn't just a black thing some people think that it is it's a thing for all people rights that has been violated so hey, when you were uh, with the housing uh, organization around what was the time of, of that membership and when you were buying houses? That would have been back in, I would say in the 70s as well. Okay. Yeah, I would All say right. in the 70s. Um, I'm also a life member of Chapter 11, uh, Springfield, Missouri, uh, dis Disabled American Veterans. And what we do there, we have, uh, we have about five vans that we uh, transport vet veterans to hospitals and we go like from Fed, go to Fayetteville, uh, Mount Vernon, uh, Columbia, Kansas City, and so free of charge to the veterans. So we have that. I'm also a member of the Northern Cherokee. You might want that close. I don't know. The Northern Cherokee Nation, Chickamauga. Also, I didn't present this one. Here's my name change for the Eagle Warrior of the Northern Cherokee Nation. And you can also go online, uh, type in Northern Cherokee, you can find that uh, you can find the Northern Cherokee Nation on uh, northerncherokeenation.com. Um,
Then I also did refrigeration, air conditioned refrigeration. Um, I'm licensed into that, still licensed today for that. Um, doing air conditioning refrigeration appliance. Um, the, the other one I'm a member of is uh, Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. <laughs> Sorry about that, Sam. Um, I've been serving on that for several years now. Um, I, right now I'm the Vice President of the Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. And to, to understand that, it was a black cemetery, but it's not, we have white people buried there too, so it's a mixed cemetery. You know, sometimes people get the idea because you say black cemetery, there's no other people out there, but we have white and black out in the Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. And it's located at East Chestnut Expressway and Barnes Street there. Um, Vice President of that thing. Now, what are some of the things that you do as a part of uh, the seminary organization? Okay, uh, I'm also serving as Vice President and also as a, like a caretaker, a keeper out there in the cemetery. I, I usually um, have keep things cleaned up. In fact, if you had seen that cemetery before we inherited it, uh, it was a mess. and. I work, praise the Lord, I work to clean that all up and kind of maintain the, uh, the neatness of it. So that's what I do there, pretty much. Um, pretty well covered everything, I think. I'm also a commercial licensed driver, CDL. I've had that for a long time. Uh, you have any questions there, Sammy? One question I like to uh, um, follow up with uh, in terms of a person who's done, uh, I think, had an extensive full life uh, involved with a lot of different areas. Um, how would you like to be remembered? Oh, I don't know. I never really. I never have given it much of a thought, to be honest with you, because sometimes once we're gone, we're gone. Right, right. And this is no doubt why I'm doing part two, because there's some things I wanted to bring out right. that's probably going to be forgotten. And um, I just want to be the best I can as a person, uh, Native American, whether I'm accepted by all or not, which you, most times you aren't. but. Um, that I've tried to help people, which I still do a lot of that. Um, I share my, what wisdom I have and knowledge with other people, those that will hear. Um, I don't know, never give much a thought. Mm -hmm. And the Cherokees, by the way, they're about the only tribe that has a written language. We have a written language. The other, the tribes are losing their language, their culture, you know, due from a long time ago, a lot of it, but we're about the only one that has a written language, and, you know, Sequoia, some of you probably heard of him, Sequoia's done the, um, the uh, alphabet code for the uh, Cherokees, and this is incidentally a Cherokee Bible in Cherokee, so we do have our language, even to this day. You have the Navajo, I think it's an unwritten language. They're losing theirs. You have the Wabanaj, you have the Manitucket, you have a lot of the tribes, uh, the Creek. I'm not sure, I don't think they have a written language either. Seminole, um, incidentally, I'm part Creek and uh, Cherokee, which is Hebrew um, as well, you know. So um, I, I didn't know about that growing up, but I found out about it in the 70s, that I'm also part Jew. We have a disease that runs in our family on my dad's side that been, we've lost people from it. And so it's been researched supposedly and goes back to people that has, they either Jew or have Jew blood. So that's how 
I mix with that as far as the Hebrews, I think we're Hebrews anyway. And the Cherokees are starting to learn about that too. My other thing there is uh, my combat V is from Vietnam. That's for outstanding services and uh, also warring off the enemy. The combat V is the, uh, Sam, if you'd like to hold that up. Uh, I've got a picture of that. you got a picture of that. Yes. It's the one with the yellow, the uh, orange and green with the anchor at the bottom. There's a Navy combat V, they call it. So I guess this concludes what I have to say, unless you may ask a question as well. Well, I, I appreciate your your willingness to uh, uh, help us out with our Route 66 uh, interview uh, and, and the oral histories. And this has been a project that has been very uh, interesting to cover. And uh, again, we certainly appreciate your service uh, as a, uh, um, a military veteran and uh, very interesting uh, facts. If people want to learn more about uh, I know that you've done some extensive, extensive uh, research into some of your, your Native American history. If someone wanted to find out a little bit of background uh, with their uh, heritage, where would you recommend that they look? They have the uh, genealogy, genealogy on computer. Um, they have applications for the various tribes that they can purchase and fill out. But they, they usually go back about four generations uh, they would like to, and some tribes are just hard to get into. Okay. You know, they didn't want to be strictly pure blood per se, but that's not that's not true today. Yeah. People have mixed so much, you're not going to have that. Yeah. But they 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 kind of want you to go back at least four generations. Yeah. You know, pretty much. Okay. But my mom, as you saw the uh, paper last time, you helped me to have that. You got pictures of all that, I think. Right. Um, but it's hard, especially for black people. When you watch that DVD I gave you, you see why it's so hard for blacks or the dark-skinned people. Because, you know, before the Europeans came here, the Indians didn't have a problem with color. They didn't look at that, period. You know, you're just another Indian. You know, they didn't look at the skin color. But because of the power that the mix had by being together, the Europeans wanted to divide and conquer, separate that. So you don't have that thoroughbred. You have people say they're full of blood or their mom or whatever. I don't see how you can because you're talking about, about 450 years ago. And when you look at those DVDs, you'll see there how uh, some of the blacks were genocided, pencil genocided, um, and how they were put down as blacks even though they weren't black as far as race. Um, some was put down as mulatto of the same family. You know, I don't know, you, you've seen families where you have the same mom and dad, you might have one real dark, one real light, maybe another real dark of the same mom and dad. But why would you put down any different on the uh, other, the, the one than you would the others, you know, having the same family. But that's, that's what we get into when you talk about genocide. So black people have a hard time because, you know, being an Indian, back when my parents were parents, that was a, like a no-no. You didn't talk about, you didn't speak the language even. That's why they're losing their language. They were put in boarding schools back in the day, and they were told if they got caught speaking language, their tongue would be cut out and stuff like this. These are all the different things to, to um, separate the people. You lose your anger, your language, your culture, you, you lost pretty much everything. And see, that's what happened with the blacks, the ones that came here, there was slaves that came here because their language was taken, their culture was taken. So the blacks as a whole don't know who they are. We don't know who we are because we were got slaves' names. We don't have an original name. And I mean, I, I'm saying it like it is, but that's the way it was. Anything you want to add? No, I probably caused enough problems already. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you. Thank you for our part two yeah. of our interview today. And that concludes our interview today with uh, Abraham Clark.